When hackers are exfiltrating information from a compromised computer, one thing they might want to do is disguise it in something like an image. Today, we'll learn how to do just that on a macOS computer, on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. After a hacker has gained access to a computer, one of the biggest challenges is getting useful information off of it and back to an exfiltration server. Now today, we're going to look into a bash script that's capable of running on a macOS computer and causing it to send the result of any command we want to an off-site PHP server. In order to follow along, you'll need to go to the Nullbyte article linked in the description written by Tokyo Neon, and this is yet another one of his awesome payloads for macOS computers that you should check out on his Twitter as well. Now, also, you'll need an Ubuntu computer or some other sort of Linux computer to run to act as our PHP attacker server, which we'll be waiting at and hoping that we get the script to run and send the payload containing whatever juicy information we've gotten off the target. Once you have a second computer on the same network ready to run and capture whatever credentials or anything else we want to hide in this image, and a macOS computer that we can run the payload on, then we can begin. Today, we're going to be following a guide by Tokyo Neon, and if you haven't already, you should check out his Twitter here, because he has a lot of similar tricks to this that are really interesting to use, especially for macOS. Now, to get started, we're going to check out the Nullbyte article here, and what we're going to look at specifically is the bash script we're going to use for exfiltrating the data. So let's take a look at the script so we can understand the individual elements before we run it on this macOS computer and set up a server to listen for the exfiltrated data on a Ubuntu computer we'll access remotely. Now first we're going to put a line that just says this is a bash script which lets the code that's executing it know uh, basically where to look for an interpreter and then we're going to say exactly what it is that we want to exfiltrate. In our case we're simply going to run who am I uh, which on our macOS computer here should just say skikar. Now, next over here, we're going to need the exfiltration site. And in our case, we're going to be using an Ubuntu computer on the same network. So this will simply be an IP address, a port number, and then the index.php, which we'll create in a second on our Ubuntu computer. Now, we're also going to include a fallback just in case we don't manage to find a suitable image. And this is pretty simple. If we copy and paste it, we can see that if there's no other suitable images on our host computer, then we can run this and it will simply download this one. Now this is part of the script that I think is kind of funny because in the event that you happen to select automatically a photo they might be alarmed to see uh, going out over the network, this could actually potentially trigger someone into realizing their computer was infected if a image they didn't want being shared suddenly appeared going out over the network. But either way, if you want to keep things safe, you can always download the default one here. Now this will run a find function to try attempt to find an image that is suitable for these purposes, as I mentioned before, and from there you can decide whether or not you want to use encryption, and if so, you can set a password right here. Now for this case, I'm not going to use encryption, so I'm going to set the use encrypt part to zero, but the rest of this we can just leave as is, and it should work just fine. Now, there's a lot of different ways that we can run this script. We could do a Trojanize uh, application, we could do it in a ducky script, but basically let's assume that we have a computer that we're running this on and trying to exfiltrate the result of our command to our waiting attack computer. So let's go ahead and log into our attack computer. I'm going to do ssh into it in two different sessions. All right, and then as soon as we're in, I'm gonna confirm that I am in a different box and we're gonna set up the PHP server. So this is what we're gonna set up in order to listen for what we are attempting to capture. And we're gonna take this code and create something called index.php. And we can do that with nano by typing nano index.php. Now here you can see I've already pasted in the information we need to handle the image that's going to come and be saved to the attacker's computer. So once we copy and paste this from the article, just like that, we can press Control X. Uh, we press Y in order to select Y to save it, and then we should be good. 
Next up, we are going to go ahead and deploy the payload, but we'll need to modify a couple things first. In my macOS computer, I already have the payload here, so I'm going to go nano payload.sh. Now, scrolling through this, you can see as I go down that I've changed the command to be who am I, and then I've changed the IP address here to be 8081. And this is important because you might find that port 80 or something might already be in use, and I'll show you what that looks like now. So on our attacker computer, I'm going to run PHP S and then we need to make sure to specify the IP address that we are running this from. So I will specify 192.168.08. And we'll try to run it on port 80, but as you can see, it's already, oops, let's try to sudo it. You can see that it's already in use. So we'll try to do 80, 81 and see if that works. There we go. So now we have a uh, PHP server running on port 8081. And if we run this, we should be able to successfully send the file to index.php at 192.168.08 on port 8081. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Uh, so we've also gone through and made sure that we're not using encryption. Uh, so we've set the value to zero. Uh, let's find that there. Here it is. So using crypto set to zero. And if you want to play with that, you can. I just found I had a little trouble with it in this demo. So I'm going to press control X and our payload should now be set. We've copied and pasted the one from the article on Nullbyte and we've customized it so it will call back to our server. Now I'm going to go ahead and run. Hopefully this will work. Uh, just bash payload.sh. You can see we get a hit on our server. And now I'm going to type ls grip star.png. Oops. There we go. All right, so we've got a couple different PNGs. I'm going to run the command one more time. And we can see we now have another one. And it looks like, let's see, which is the new one? This one. All right, so this is our exfiltrated file. So in order to now see this, we're going to refer back to the article and we're going to just basically use the most basic, uh, sorry, the most simple command in order to try to look at this because we didn't use encryption. So if we just do a tail tack n and then the name of the image, we can go ahead in our box, type, oops. And just type it in and then we'll do this image and let's see what we get. All right, there we go we can see that we have successfully exfiltrated Skakar. That is the result of our command that we ran. So that means that we've successfully been able to get this to steal information from our macOS computer and bring it all the way over to our attacker's computer, which is running Ubuntu. This is really useful if you want to disguise this information. And again, if you go ahead and use encryption, then they will have no way of being able to tell that all the random garbage that's been appended at the end of the PNG or JPEG file is actually some secret data that you've stolen from their computer. Maybe something like a payload I really like, which will exfiltrate the current uh, PSK of the Wi-Fi network you're connected to. If you wanted to steal someone's Wi-Fi password, this might be a way that you could do that. Today, we learned just how easy it is to encode information into a JPEG image and send it in a way that might bypass a firewall to a waiting PHP server. Now, this also required us to be on the same network as the attacker, but in the future, the attacker could just register a VPS and then this attack would work pretty much from anywhere. Now, the best solution to avoid this isn't some sort of deep packet inspection, it's just preventing this attack from happening in the first place. You should never leave your laptop open and unlocked, and if you happen to find a USB thumb drive, you should never plug it in and definitely never run something like a PDF, which if you checked out the Nullbyte article linked in the description by Tokyo Neon, is a perfect attack vector for this sort of script. If you check this out, make sure that you only run it on your own computer, because while this is pretty powerful, it's also not something you should go running on someone else's computer, because depending on what you're exfiltrating, you could get in a lot of trouble. 
That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you like this script, you should also check out Tokyo Neon's Twitter. And if you have any ideas for future episodes of Cyber Weapons Lab, you can send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.